Hello, everybody, again, and welcome to another episode of Stock Talk. I am your host, Mike, and with me, I have, where, where are you at, man? Are you, like, in the mountains today, or what? Uh, forests that are in the shadow of the mountains, but yes. Nice. We got a decent show planned for you today. Uh, we've got some interesting stocks to uh, talk about. Now, Kagi, they are on the pump and dump list. Uh, so that is going to be uh, somewhat of a concern there what, that we're talking about them. But we are talking about them just because uh, they're, they're popping in, in the, the promotions are going out for them on, on a Tuesday there. Uh, so mm. going forward, uh, the first company we're going to talk about, we don't have uh, uh, Cameo. He is out on an East Coast swing and uh, it's late past his time. Uh, he's, got a, he's out with his little snuggle uh, teddy bear. And then uh, Hog, he's on a, he's on a call for something else there. So uh, possibly Hog could join in. Uh, one of the first stocks we're going to talk about, though, is MDVL. MDVL. Uh, last tick was uh, two dollars and uh, fifty cents. You can see on the chart. Um, on uh, it looks like going to negative uh, twenty three cents after hours. That's probably some of the shorters and things like that. Uh, some people are sh- saluting their uh, shorts there. Uh, as you could say, uh, going on to uh, looking at the chart there, uh, you could see uh, obviously with the with the branded bounce, uh, June 20, 2021. And then you have the big dip where the first correction is. Uh, we'll have to see uh, where it goes to the to the next correction there. So going going forward. So we'll, we'll have to check out with that uh, going into what would you say they do here? Uh, going in here, it looks like Metavale Holdings is a technology-enabled pharmacy company which engages in the development and commercialization of self-service pharmacy, mobile applications, kiosks, drive-through solutions. It operates retail pharmacy services, technology segments. The retail pharmacy service segment comprises of Metavale Pharmacy Incorporated, and it does business under trade in the name of uh, Spot, Spot RX Pharmacy. The pharmacy technology uh, segment represents Metavale Technologies that sell systems including uh, MetaCenter prescription, dispensing kiosk software, and uh, integration and maintenance uh, services. Uh, and it was founded on April 11, 2007 and is in uh, Canada there. Uh, so, Kagi, going on to stock twits because that's where the real traders are at. What do you got on the twits there? I'm seeing a lot of bulls for this stock, a lot of uh, positivity for this one. Like this take from Signal RU's. He's mm-hmm. he's a plus member on StockTwits. He says MDVL, fifty percent plus for the day trade. Thank you. Come again. One of my favorite rinse and repeat plays right now. And he's got a little uh, snapshot of what he did for his uh, trade. Okay. And what what else do you have there? Uh, how about this one from? MB trades, he says, bullish. Does the beatdown continue tomorrow, or will that one dollar fifty eight cents be the support we have been looking for? RSI at twenty one on the daily. I'm see. I'm thinking you're going to be seeing this all over the place, just because of the week it's in, and it's on because of the promotion list. Uh, but, but going forward uh, with everything that they have going on, we're going to have to see what players get involved and in things like that uh, before we make any harsh decisions, whether we stay a play or things like that. So it's going to be interesting going through the alphabet news uh, of what we got there. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go on to uh, the website. We're going to check that out. We're going to check out the al- alphabet news and see what we got there too. All right. Okay there, Kagi. So going on to the website, it looks good, but what do you expect from a, a $2 and change stock? You expect stuff like this. So uh, look, looking at the, the dispensary there, that looks like a pretty sweet kiosk there, huh? Yeah, it almost looks like one of those uh, little uh, futuristic Gadunka mm-hmm. machines where you can yep. basically select what you want and then it'll just Gadunka, Gadunk out, just like those... Uh, yeah. And that, that, that is the future because people don't want to go uh, stand in line and things like that. And as, as technology uh, gets, gets uh, as, as far as technology moves along further, you're going to see more and more of these things show up and they're going to be pretty much everywhere because pretty much everybody's into that, like no contact thing. Uh, society is just moving fast, fast, fast like that. Um, the, going into uh, some of the stuff they have here, they have the tailor for, for, tailored formulary. 
Uh, each uh, medical center location can support a different uh, medication formally tailored to uh, clinical uh, demographic business needs regulated. It adheres to strict regulations, requirement permit, uh, promote uh, remote dispensing, uh, ensuring safety and loss. Dispensaries M4 hold 600 plus medications at one time. That is freaking ridiculous there, Kage, uh, that it does that. Don't, mm-hmm. don't you think? Yeah, it is uh, interesting with the amount that they're using with that mm-hmm. with that amount of accessibility as well. So yeah, it looks like it says contactless moves medications from in the vault and to the patient's hands without even being touched by a human. So you're it, not even it, getting... It almost seems to like it's like one of those uh, futuristic Swiss banks where you have like the case and everything and mm-hmm. you enter into your your password and your uh, identification number and mm-hmm. then it just plucks it from, yeah. the, from the shelf and then secures it just right where you are and without ever ha- human hands ever touching it. Yeah, and I think the other good thing is too is that for a lot of your immune compromised people and things like that, they're able to ac- they're able to access that without having to go uh, stand in line and things like that, or even have to have that contact. So that's good uh, for it them. Uh, I'm, I'm just worried that uh, there's like prescriptions that need to be like halved or something like mm-hmm. that, where you need to have some kind of human oversight to actually make sure that no one person is getting too much or having adverse reactions to the prescription that they're prescribed and then find out that it was too much or too little. Yeah, so. that, is, that is a huge concern. And that's going to be maybe some of the listeners out there can answer that question because that is a good question for that. Uh, safety, it says all regula- regulatory acts performed under the supervision of licensed healthcare professionals, uh, accuracy, sophisticated robot picking label systems, minimizing errors versus traditional human systems. Well. I don't know. I, well, I don't know what you trust, but I think I trust the human more than the freaking robot. Though, <laughs> what do you well, think? Well, uh, I kind of trust uh, both to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there are some things that humans can do that robots can't. Mm-hmm. And as far as like automation goes, robots are only going to be as smart as we need them to be. Mm-hmm. Where we don't necessarily want them too smart to actually be making overriding decisions Mm -hmm. but we want to have them be smart enough to be able to do their job which is to be like either reading labels or scanning information or picking the right thing and bringing it where it needs to go yeah you also you also have some heavy hitters here you have sam's club uh hca healthcare and optimum healthcare there as well uh, so going on to uh, stock twits. Uh, sorry, there. Let me just stop it. Okay, court. Okay, so going on to uh, stock twits because that's where the real traders are at. Kagi, what else do you got on the twits there? Uh, let me see. I've got a couple of uh, ones here. There's this one from Team Bullish Trading, which we've done a couple of their mm-hmm. their their takes for this stock for many different stocks. And it says okay. for M- MDVL, he says entry $2.36 closed for $2.65. And that's some, uh, and it says for this uh, comment, it says 100% win rate for after 100% win rate. And some of you still on the sidelines. Hmm. And he's got a couple of other stocks where he's got like a little, strategy of like what your entry point is and what your closing point should be so okay that's good what, to know. what other he's got a little link you... to uh to his little uh thing well you have some heavy hitters in here you have H- hca healthcare uh you got sam's club intel just singer uh or geisinger uh blue blue cross blue shield uh tm1 uh so this this thing has got uh and they're also they're in uh off of Mill Creek Drive in uh, Canada, and also they have some Arizona offices there, uh, so they're getting the warm s- sunshine there in Phoenix. Uh, what else do you have there on the twits? Uh, how about this one from Noob for You? He says bullish MDVL institutions want five plus. Don't let these shorts scare you. Only one short is retail. La- laughing out loud, dumb money. And he's got his little uh, 
little, little trade uh, chart with him to explain. What, what else you got on the Twitter? sir? Uh, there's uh, like one guy who's like doing it like bearish moves or something. I think he's just being a little bit, uh, just being a little prick, I think. Um, okay. How about this? Uh, how about this one from uh, Hoop Baby 07 This is pretty good. He says, mm-hmm. "MDVL, good luck, everyone. I cut my losses on all in type of trader. I can't afford to risk it. Dropping back to two dollars during hours, I can't mm-hmm. trade. When my average was two point five six. Hope it rockets without me. F them shorts." M- Make them buy back these shares at ten bucks. So, yeah, yeah I, he's got a good point because he's got he is he is he's got a point for the fact that he's got to lock in the profits and things like that. If you're not locking in profits, then you're you're it's it's not you're, it's you're not a just, good thing. Uh, you're just so Kagi Ka, Kagi. One thing I'm seeing on uh, that's kind of concerning is just promos everywhere. So I'm thinking that a lot of people are writing on some of these promos, but it is a decent look and it is a decent buy. So it's something to check out. You want to check out there. Uh, what else do you have on the Twitch there of more interesting comments, some with receipts and things like that? Uh, how about this one from Vertical? We've actually done a couple of their uh, comments before and they're pretty reliable and they always have their charts mm-hmm. with them. And uh, they say MDVL started to run during the middle of the day. Daily chart also strong. Gained plus 21% after mentioning it. Chart set up in the comments. And he's got his little uh, setup in his, his chart about this stock, how it's up and everything. And the good and the float, the retail volume, the volume where it is, where it is, and the, it's dated. So you know this is up to date. And it was posted uh, 3.18 p.m. today, I think. So is does vertical is vertical liking this one or yeah he likes this one he's a bull he's a bull okay. for this one he so. is he is vert, does vertical identify as an army of ape or anything like that because we love the uh, ape. I not that I've seen not not okay. that I'm aware but okay. yeah if you get if you get any ape, it, he he's a reliable source that always brings his charts he always nice. brings his charts I think he's I think if he is in the army of apes he wants people to make smart decisions and yeah, so he, exactly i think don't that's give, why he uh, posts things like that whether yeah, he's don't. an army of apes or not doesn't matter i think he's a good good source for comments for strategy and also mm-hmm. for for uh reliable sources for why he thinks the way he does with charts and numbers and how he uh makes his uh how he makes his little comments okay so for this one i'm saying it's a decent watch there's some heavy players in here we're just gonna have to see all this plays out the negative to this is there is promos everywhere and shorts all over this freaking thing so i would just say watch out on this one it's showing up on promotions all over the freaking net uh what do you got on it yeah with the promotions i would be a little hesitant to get in right now looking at the uh, actual chart for this stock i think it would be actually uh decent way to get in right now but i would be very cautious about about the promotions if uh you want to get in this would probably be a good time to get in and who knows it might actually uh, go over to three or five or something in the next next few days but i would say this one is a decent watch but beware promotions yep Well, we'll be back in two and two, and we'll see you in a few. Peace. Okay, guys, the next next stock we have is uh, CEI. CEI, last tick was a dollar and three cents. Going going on to the stock uh, chart, looks like year to date. Well, obviously, October 2021, we had a spike in this. And then uh, she dove off, and then she's back to a buck. But... uh, looks decent as far as uh going there and uh you know the reason why we had our october bounce as well because the the drums beating and things like that and we don't need to go into it uh going on to stock twits because that's where the real traders are at kagi what else do you have on the twits there uh how about this take from jet jets fan y-e-g he says bullish so cei if 
I were to buy some call options, what are the best ones to buy? Hmm. So it looks like he's looking for options, looks like, for the stock. Um, or how about this one from Visi XOX? He says, CI guys, if this goes above $20, let's go to Colorado for a beer for the weekend. Um, I'm thinking it is going up just for the fact that, uh, what do we got? The EU is putting the embargo on Russia. And so that's going to send, uh, what is it? We're going to go to a, a, a $185 a barrel, supposedly. Uh, so I would assume that all oil stock, no matter what it is, is going to, whether it affects this, that remains to be seen. But uh, yes, I, I do think that this, this is going to be affected. And I think long-term player, this is probably going to be good going forward. Uh, whether your buy point is, it is showing up on a promotion list and all over promotions. So that's something where uh, that's a proceed with caution. Going into what would you say you, they do here? Uh, they're an independent oil natural gas company. It, it engages in acquisition, development, and uh, of shale uh, crude oil, natural gas, and various known productive geological formations. The operation is mainly focused in central Oklahoma, uh, West Texas. Camber Energy was uh, founded by William Sawyer and James uh, Cerna, December 16, 2003, and headquartered in Houston, Texas. Uh, so go, we're not going to go on to the website because we pretty much uh, went and did the website there before. Uh, what else do you got on the twits there? What do you find? And I'll give you the latest alphabet news. Uh, how about this one from Key Series E9? He says, C.I., if this goes to $40, I'm officially a millionaire and can finally move to California, hoping this <laughs> blows up like I-N-D-O for all of us. Yeah, he's got a, it. and he's got a uh, GIF picture of a uh, of uh, I think Tupac. I think that's a fresh, good that's... made bail, fresh out of jail, California. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, that's that's a good deal right there. Uh, that would be right up Camillo's alley. He would have loved that. Uh, going on to uh, Market Watch, they got a plug here. This was uh, like I said, this is being heavily promoted because they're writing off uh, this news right here in Market Watch. So it's thinking about buying stock in Canberra Energy, Mullen Automotive, Veritonics, or uh, Houston American Energy. Uh, and then they go into uh, Canberra with uh, Investors Observer. Uh, and they have this report here. Hold on, it was a freaking stray. Hey, it looks like they have shares of Canberra Energy plunge 50.2% in volatile trading Tuesday as they extend the sell off for nearly a two year high. The oil and natural gas company stock rocketed 161.6% amid a, a six day win streak. The average day volume was 52.3 million shares to 382 on September 30th, which is the highest closing price since October 2019. I wonder why that was. Was that, did that have to do with Brandon or anything? <laughs> Most likely, I think. It uh, looks like kudos to Tuttle Capital Management Chief Executive Matthew Tuttle, who last week said the rally took a, a head fake and it appeared to be possible uh, pump by some Wall Street investors using social media volume as a tool. Oh, uh, so the social media people to pump up the jam. Uh, no, the, the the promotion list. It's don't don't blame the meme traders or anything like that or any of these guys. This is pump up. You guys do the. It's funny how they try to blame they the the uh, the alphabets try to blame uh, social media when uh, these guys do the classic pump up the jam all the time with their freaking emails and the promoters getting paid. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the pot calling the kettle black. I'm afraid. Yeah, they're they're trying to accuse them of this, and then uh, they go off and do this stupid stuff. These 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 it's, tell you guys it's a war out there. If you don't think the alphabets. The alphabets do not like any of us at all. They are not your freaking friends. I don't know why people carry the cooler for news organizations. I really don't. Uh, so uh, that was uh, that was that was a plug in October. Uh, there. Uh, what what else do you have? Uh, how about this uh, take from Warner Mike? He says, "CI, you know, I'm not sure what the work that works out to, but I do see this climbing on its own." How high can it get before the MM F it up? I can't, I don't know. I'm in under 0.9 and is two is nice three is bang. 
I truly believe my, by EOM, it is two plus and probably minus three. I'm good with that. If they have enough money in it to squeeze, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure out there to stop or out and out kill meme stock. I don't know, but I'm here to make money and I feel that it is really huge money squeeze, not so sure of. But if you are in my, this is it, has all the potential to make money. Last thought, when you make money, don't get greedy, take it. I have yep. to agree with that. When you yep. win it, you your hand of poker, take the money and then just don't get greedy. Don't yep. get greedy with the, your winnings. Yeah, Try to... Yeah, try to uh, hold on to them as best you can because you yep. never know what the next hand you're going to get. And yep. therefore, you, need to, uh, you have to play it not necessarily the man across from you, but you also have to play the system as well. Exactly. So you have to be doubly mindful about your uh, strategy. Well, I've got a plug from, uh, this is coming from, let's see, this is Investor's Place. This might bring up some uh, things here for, this might trigger some people here. Today's the highest uh, price point for natural gas in the U.S. since 2008. As the war in Ukraine drags on, global energy crunch continues, leaving governments scrambling to find solutions. This has meant a renewed uh, focus on energy and gas sending uh, prices up across the U.S., Europe, and today, uh, which is all pretty much created and everything like that artificially. Today, CI Energy is seeing impressive gains by uh, the larger peers struggling. Um, it looks like that uh, prices at Henry Hub, the benchmark of U.S. gas, nearly doubled since the start of the year. As of last Friday, they sat at 7.30 uh, per million British thermal units, indicating uh, gain roughly 10% today. Along this, uh, Canberra Energy shares have rallied. At this writing, uh, CI stock is up more than 20%, which brings the gains over the past five uh, trading days to up to 30% there. Uh, so uh, what else do you got on the Twitter comments yeah. as far as your uh, comments from the trades traders there? Uh, how about this one from Blade Trader? I like the name. He says, CI, shorts are not trapped. Bulls are trapped. Waiting for CI to turn green from red. Facts. And he's got a little uh, comment from a uh, another trader called Swing and Hold It Long. And I think that's his, uh, that's uh, what he was trying to point out with his comment. Okay. Um, in, in this article, they go to why does it matter? It says few penny stocks receive much attention as CEI trading just over a dollar per share to squeak above micro cap says, I think you're going to see this thing all through the week on just all on the promotion list just because of that news we got of the boycott uh, with uh, Russia. Uh, as far as uh, the, Euro the European Union. Uh, with that, that will send, uh, like I said, prices of oil per barrel at $185 a barrel. Uh, and then you're going to be back to 200 again easily. So uh, this is one to keep in your eye. Uh, the problem is, is just the, you know, where's your buy point, especially for this week, unless you're shorting, because everybody and their dog is going to see this pop up on their email list for the promotions. Uh, sorry to give away the bag for the media. The media is like, oh, yeah, social media caused this and everything like that. No, social media didn't cause these. Uh, this is called uh, you guys send promotions out and then you guys try to blame meme traders for, for things. Why, when that, That's when meme traders are making money. That's when they try to blame them. Uh, so it's, Yeah, it's kind of a sick, twisted game they play. Yeah, all the time. And that, that's why I try to tell people is that these people are not your friends. Uh, none of them are uh, politicians or media, and people still like to carry the cooler for a news organization. I'm like, dude, how much do they pay you to carry the cooler for them? You know, especially on Twitter and things, it's kind of sick. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, people have to understand that these uh, conglomerates have their own own chips in, and they've got fingers in many pies, and they're only looking out for their own interests, and they have their own agendas to actually mm -hmm. achieve them, and you can't necessarily always uh, count on them to be telling the truth for yeah. the masses because yeah. of it. A corporate media is not a freaking fact check, just to let anybody know. When you when you throw that in someone fa someone's face, it's just the biggest laugh ever when you try to fact somebody's like, oh, I saw this in the Washington Compost or 
I saw this in uh, uh, the uh, old York Times or USA Away or something like that. It's all trash, man. And just you have to paid ask shells. these people who fact checks the fact checkers. Who's yeah, exactly. It, who vouches for them? How are they verified? How are they certified for this job? That they're, they they're certified, but who have? pays the bills? Who turns the lights yeah, on? Who That's paid, what... Yeah, who pays the bills? Yep. Uh, it looks like uh, it says here that uh, some of the experts have praised Camber's uh, foray into clean energy. Even though there's a high amount of risk, this is nonetheless for me the most interesting clean energy plays out there. Uh, so there's some clean energy uh, play, uh, as far as that out there uh, trending with this stock. Uh, the trending rise of natural gas prices has certainly uh, made for an intense industry. Let's see, whatever would show called natural gas, I think, was it last year, the year before? Uh, I think in 2020, uh, was it 2020 fall? And spring we did on a different show. Oh yeah, that was right. That was this show uh, about that. But no, never mind. Uh, the the trending of natural gas price shares have certainly been the most interesting industry of the landscape. Uh, you know, CDNC uh, reports natural gas prices are up to 102 percent for this year. Oh gee, I wonder why. Uh, while it makes sense of the world uh, would send names like CI stock shooting up, yeah, and it's going to shoot up more. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned on this play. Uh, you know, watch your promotions this week, but I don't see why that this thing is not, you're going to see more, more movement north and it's going to be a decent play. I'd put it on as a highly watch. What about you? Uh, this, uh, this stock with what it's involved in, I would give it a definite watch. This is a uh, good stock to get into if you're looking to get into the energy sector. And uh even though it's fallen a little bit since October and whatnot, it's still at a decent price point where you can get in. And uh, it's probably going to go shooting up when, uh, when the chips are down. Yeah. So, yeah. If you don't, th yeah. If you, if you don't think we're going to go back to 200 a barrel again, you, you got another, you got another thing coming to you. You're going back to $200 a barrel because of incompetence, doubling down, uh ninkum poops that's that's what it is and the, you yeah, know the and adult them, uh, being irresponsible with oh we'll just print more money more money mm -hmm. it'll solve all the they're problems. calling for more money but yeah doing that makes uh, makes all the money that you have in your wallet worth a lot less than you think mm -hmm. it does so... don't worry don't worry too the, the the adults are back in the room the, the easter bunny showed up yesterday so that just goes to show you the easter bunny showed up with uh with uh, Saki and she would, and they were uh, the Easter Bunny was rolled out. So the adults are back in the room. They're here. So just to give you a heads up. So we're we're all going to be taken care of. Everything's going to be good in the hood. So uh, do you got anything else to add for the after these two? Uh, then maybe we'll have a full show tomorrow or what? Uh, I think uh, with both of these stocks that we did, um, watch the promotions. Uh, Know your buy-in point. Uh, don't get discouraged by bears or party poopers that are in the comments. And uh, know exactly what you're getting into. Do your due diligence. Okay. And uh, don't make it a dog show. And good night now. Good night. <laughs>